I'm always looking for new sound sources for inspiration, generate new things quickly, and the, the modular has been just an amazing source of all that. It's kind of like the, the endless sample sampling library that'll be ever constantly changing and growing. The musical works of Apex Swing was hugely inspiring, and Autech are some of these early sort of, they would um, term it, coin the term IDM, or intelligent dance music was kind of what it was lumped into. And so that music became more complex, and the programming and the sound started to become more textural and, and um, detailed. I was looking for synths that would be able to create some more of those um, complicated um, textures and timbres. And I noticed that some of the artists were using modular or semi-modular synths at the time. And one artist that I was really into was um, Jack Dangers from Beat Manifesto. Any time that he would come through town, I would go to his shows and um, see his performances and notice that he would travel with an ARP 2600. This was during the earlier touring days. And I was fascinated by what he was using on stage. He had a rack of samplers and all this hardware around him. And then, you know, there, there was the ARP 2600 in this case, kind of at an angle with all these patch cables. And I was like, what is that? That is the craziest, you know, looking thing. And I was like, I need to, I need to find out what this is. Because if Jack Dangers is using this, then I know this is going to be awesome. Because everything he's putting out on his records is amazing. <laughs> um, I was just so blown away by some of the sounds that he would get. I got my first 2600 in a pawn shop for around $250. Um, it was pretty beat up. It was, uh, you know, had been through, uh, looked like I'd been through some pretty traumatic experience. But It was my first introduction to the modular world. You know, I knew that the synth could do some really cool things, and uh, but it wasn't until I started experimenting with it and trying it out in the studio that I realized that it was, you know, it, it blew me away much further than any any of my expectations I had in my mind. And um, that was when that was a huge turning point for me because what I realized with modular synthesizers is that there was really no right or wrong way of you know, patching them. You could try all these different things and things would happen unexpectedly. It, it was almost like it had its own personality. It was like a, a living organism that would sort of do its own thing. These, these circuits would come to life. Even the little slightest thing would, would cause it to, to change and be different. I don't know how to explain it. I call it the analog voodoo effect, you know? To a lot of people it's kind of hard to explain unless you've experienced it with an analog synthesizer. You get this feeling that it has this kind of like it almost has its like own persona personality to it. So there was a period there where I was starting to sell off a lot of my old synthesizers, some of the modular uh, keyboards that I bought. I sold off my EMS uh, synthy to buy the Kima system and some of these advanced uh, so-called DSP signal processing engines and started to get a lot more into computer, pro you know, doing things in the computer. Um, and found myself like over the past 10 years, like had gotten so deep into working um, within the computer virtual environment that it kind of took away the, the, fun, the fun factor that I was enjoying with analog. I had my head so wrapped around that for so long that I kind of forgot how, and it started to get boring after a while to me. I'd sit in front of a computer and I'd be like, yeah, this is cool when I'm hearing and I love all the, contr you know, the control and the flexibility that I have, but I just not feeling inspired like I used to when I sit down and played with my sense and things would happen accidentally and you're like, whoa, how did that happen? That, that's really cool. What, what did I do to do that? You know, and that doesn't happen as often in the computer realm, you know, and um, I, I started to miss those things and um, so I kind of went back full circle again. <laughs> That basically is, you know, you know, my journey coming from buying these things, using them, and then got into this whole idea that I needed to sell all that stuff off to move into the next realm and thinking I wouldn't need all that stuff again, when the reality of it was now I'd love to have all that stuff back again. Um, and I'm buying a lot of that stuff I'd sold back that I <laughs> had gotten rid of and now my wife's always, she's like, before you sell any of your modular scents, it has to go through me first because I don't want to have you crying for like the next few years that you sold your EMS or this whatever scent that you had, you know. And I love the form factor of this, you know, this, the Eurorack form factor. It's like it's small, you can rack it, it's portable. Um, and I love the idea that you could take them out 
and move the modules around and change the configuration. I was like, that's genius. That's just, and then when I was looking at Dieter Dofer stuff, I was like, wow, this stuff's been around for a while. How does this not really caught on with more musicians? And then as I started to research, I was like, oh, actually, there's actually a lot of musicians that have been using this for a while. I'm seeing why this is so cool right now. I see why this is, it's easy to get into. and. This the whole fact that you can design your own synth. You can pick your own oscillators and filters and VCAs and now you have options. You don't have to go with necessarily one manufacturer. You can pick from you know a wide selection of different varieties of different timbres and colors. And if you want to go with digital oscillators, you can go with digital oscillators. You want to go all analog and be pure, you can go that route. Yeah, my systems are like the Frankenstein systems, because it's basically there's no there's no set case in my studio that's all of one module. You've got like Schwayman, you've got like Harvestman and Dofer and Intelligel and all these like different brands. When I look at it, I'm like, wow, this is just like this crazy collection of different people's ideas and backgrounds and technologies kind of fused into this one box. There's nothing that's ever permanent. You can always take something out, add or subtract or change, reconfigure the configuration, get new modules, trade them in or sell some stuff out. This system that's constantly in flux and morphing and changing, you think differently. It makes you feel differently about the synth because you're like, oh, I don't like that. I'm just going to pull out and change it. A lot of times that concept blows people's minds away. It blows my mind away all the time. Still to this day, I love that whole thing. But, and that there's no right or wrong. You know, there's not really a wrong way to use these instruments. That's what's so cool about it.